Okay, everybody, welcome to Advent of Code 2019, Day 9. I'm Bart Massey, and I thought I would go ahead and record my adventure today just for fun. Uh, sorry about any problems with the setup. I know that I don't probably have the uh, voice delay calibrated right. I know the lighting's kind of weird. I haven't done this in a while, so we'll tune it up as we go. But just wanted to sort of give you hopefully a view of what it looks like when I solve one of these problems. We're about to start here. Uh, it'll be uh, coming up. Oh, we are up. So let's go ahead and get going. I'm going to put myself out of the way for a moment and we'll see what day nine has brought us. Okay. In order to lock onto the signal, you'll need to boost your sensors. Let me make this text a little bigger because video, there we go. Also plays basic operation of system test. Oh, my existing income code computer, relative mode parameters. Okay, that should be straightforward. Right. Uh-huh. The relative base offset instruction. I see. So we actually need a relative base. We need uh, to be able to have memory beyond the actual program available to write on and we need to have support for large numbers we'll see what large numbers means here hopefully 64 bits is large numbers i really don't want to put big nums in do i really have to put big nums in well okay so this is what we're dealing with. Let's see if we, if this 16 digit number fits in 64 bits. That's a good place to start. Could just print it in base 16, this is easier. That's 50 bits. I'm gonna assume 64 bits is sufficient until I find out it isn't and off we go so right now i'm sitting in my advent of code 2019 directory and i have a bunch of infrastructure set up that sometime i'll make a separate video about but the idea is that i say this and cd to day 09 and here i am but i mostly want to work in my lib aoc directory because that's where itcode.rs is so let's get going on all this. I'm already using 64-bit integers, so I'm going to assume that's okay. Um, until I find out otherwise, I guess I can get my input.txt and see what's going on. Maybe there's some giant ones. Uh, well, what is the square of this thing? Let's look one more time just to see if we already know the answer. I really don't want to already know the answer. Nope, still 50 bits. All right, so we should be all right there. All right. So let's start by looking at what we're going to have to do to support growing the program. There's a bunch of places where I check to see if I'm out of range. So let's go find all those places. They should all have a panic at this point. Fetch off and okay. So this should be great. Um. So 
So what does the off-end memory get initialized to? Let's be really careful here. It looks like starts with the value zero. All right. Um, so this fetch off end can be um, done by just using an extend on my program memory. So self dot prog dot extend zero self dot index comma zero should get us there. Now let me make sure that my program is stored as a vec. Ah, uh, it's not. Oh yeah, it's all right. It's a mutable vector. Okay. So I really can extend it. And then here, um, I need to get rid of this and replace it with this. And unfortunately, this code was all copy pasted a while back and I really meant to fix that and I never did. Extend opened as u size comma zero. Did I get the u size up above? Oh, self.index is already a u size. All right, that takes care of the cases of fetching. Um, prog.extend uh, self.index comma zero. Let me go back and check these. Did I do the right thing here? Yes, I did. All right. Try to be careful today because people are watching and we'll make the same modification here. And yes, it's embarrassing that we start out with the one place in my encode interpreter where um, I have a bunch of copy paste code. Of course we did. That's the nature of this thing. So we'll store self.prog.extend um, operand is that big enough? Oh, shoot. Yeah, it'll be all right. As u size comma zero. All right. Yep. All right. That all looks good. So those are the places where I fetch and store values. If I'm trying to jump off the end down here somewhere when I'm running, I also am going to have a problem that I need to figure out. <laughs> but <sighs> otherwise, I guess we just do this. I don't know what happens if it jumps into unknown memory, but um we'll assume the same thing is supposed to happen as anything else and just make it jump off into my new unknown memory extend target as u size comma zero all right I'm not sure what i really want to do here um so that's that and i don't think any of the rest of this can be wrong. Cargo build, let's make sure we didn't make dumb bugs. Yeah, we did. It takes one parameter, but two parameters. Oh, resize, not extend. Yes, 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 yes. No, yes, okay, let's try again. Oh, of course you can't. <sighs> well, darn. So we aren't going to be able to do it right here. Oh, 
do it is up at the top where we haven't got to borrow out of our way here. Um, so we'll just go up here. I don't think any of this is necessary. I'm just going to panic for now. I'm going to assume this isn't a thing. Right. I'm in this wild loop anyway, so I'll just let this panic. I don't think that was what the authors intended, so let's find out. Okay, let's test it, run some int code programs and make sure they work. They do. So now we got the resize thing fixed. I think we have large enough numbers. And I need to now patch in relative mode. So I have fortunately a bunch of mode decoder bits so I can add operand mode rel and the nice thing about having done this as an enum is that if I forget somewhere to mat in a match statement to fix it up the good thing will happen I'll get a nice compiler warning saying it fails that's the joy of rust okay so Got our mode bits. I assume rel is mode two. I should check. Mode two, relative mode, check. Okay. And let's go with open mode rel. Right, I'm gonna need to add the rel base here somewhere. Okay, again, more ugly copy-paste coding that we should clear up at some time. So the operand itself is now a relative offset. I see. So we need to fix this. So now it's the same code I see. So there's really no reason not to move this into the other case. There's no reason to copy this. I can just do the obvious thing. Boy, I don't want to think about this anymore. Oh. I see. So now what we've done is we've gone ahead and included this, and so um, there's probably some more elegant way to write this, but at some point you just start writing stuff. Um, I'll clean it up later. So I'll need to go back and add rel base here shortly. We'll see what the rel base starts at. The problem description must tell us. But the problem is that I need to make mode here.
There we go. And I believe the mode bits are copy and equal, partial equal and shit. Let's find out, excuse my French. Let's find out where the mode bits are. Really? There we go. Nope. Partial eek eek. And of course they should, might as well be debug because things should always be debug. All right. So I think that code's okay for fetch. Let's add rel base. Int code, int code, int code, int code. There we go. So now I gotta add in the rel base. Whoops. Uh-oh, that always means there's trouble. So something didn't get indented right up above. Okay, great. Um, the last thing was, oh, I see. I haven't finished this fetch somehow yet. Oh, I see. That's probably all there is to that. Nope. And I must also be missing some bracketing here. Let's see, is this fouled up too? Nope. Oh, looks good. So where is my messed up bracketing? That's in store. That's in fetch. That all looks fine. Okay, that's freakish and I do not understand it. Let's let the compiler help us. Thank you. Unexpected closed delimiter. Okay, so I don't have something closed properly here. And it's probably somewhere here in... Oh yeah, it might be in fetch or store. Probably is in fetch. Yep. So I opened some brackets I didn't close, but I don't even understand how I did. Okay. Oh, right. It was all that copy paste I didn't get rid of. Okay. Thank you, thingy. Pray. Rel base colon use. Size. And we're going to make those U size, assuming this is a 64 bit machine, because otherwise there's no point. We can't actually run anything. So, what's the initial U base, rel base, supposed to be? It's supposed to be. It doesn't say what the relative base starts out to be. Oh, that's nice. Okay, this is the moment when things are frustrating. The relative base starts at zero. Okay, it does. This is fine. So let's go find where we initialize this. And again, the Rust compiler will be really nice about telling us if we forget to do this. Now, we fixed fetch. A little bit. We're gonna again because of course it's all about the copy paste. Fix store. And here we already have. No, we don't. Okay. There we go. Now we got relative mode here. Oh, it shouldn't be U size though, it's I size because it's a relative thing. Oh, yeah, right. Got it. Okay. So I'll go back and fix that before anything bad happens, but first let's finish what we were doing here. Go now we got mode all set. And rel 
shell base should be eye size is the bottom line here. Oh, right, no, my bad. Okay, so this code is wrong. The rel base is really supposed to be absolute. And here, operand, no, this code's absolutely just fine. If the operand's negative, which it absolutely can be, it doesn't matter. We'll add the rel base to it. The rel base is, is can the rel base be negative? I guess the rel base can be negative. <sighs> okay, yeah, it says the rel base can be negative. So that really should be an eye size. actually be an i64 <sighs> right it should be an i64 and if it's negative the store position will be out of range so all I should have to do this should all be fine except that I have to make that be an i64 like the contents of a program. That should be okay. Let's see if this builds. So this is where we do this stuff is, oops, no field rel base on a decode. Oh, not self.rel base, dot prog dot rel base. self.prog, self.relbase. I'm so confused. What is self here? Did I just name it wrong? I thought that self was a piece of int code here. Oh no, we don't pass the actual, ah. Okay. Well, for now, we'll clue it together. Who cares? Right, prog here is not actually the... Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Self is a program here. Oh, no. Self is a decode. I see. So I need to add into the decoder into new is probably where I want to store it. I can go ahead and uh, add a rel rel base field onto here. Self. Just pass it in when we decode because the decoder has no clue. I mean, the other thing to do, I guess, interesting. Yeah, for now, I'm not thinking about it. And rest format will take care of the damage later there. So now we've got that. And now I can say self.rel base. Uh, that's not pretty. Yep, that looks good. And um, when we.
There we go. And that is the only place that we need to do that is in the decode. And now we've got the rel base where it needs to be. Okay, let's do this thing. Forgot to make that mutable. There we are. Test still pass. All right, I believe at this point we have relative mode. Now, the thing is we're gonna have to um, test all this somehow. It was kind of kludged together reasonably fast. And hopefully they supplied us some tests. Hey, presto, they did. Okay, that's no, not a very good example. It's not very testable. Here's some example programs that use these features. Here we go. So what we do when we do this is we write some test cases. <clears throat> what were these things called? Test deos time, I guess. And a lot of that there again is going to be copy pasty boilerplate. Boy, anybody watching this or looking at my repo is going to be really sad because of all the copy pasting I'm doing. Honestly, I don't normally do that. So here's test number one. Take this program. to format that some more sane people way. Something like that, I guess. And my editor doesn't like that. I like it. All right. Anyway, it code colon colon new prog. Okay. Except I have to keep it a long round so that I can actually test it and make sure it does what it's supposed to. So, um, it's supposed to make a copy of itself, I assume, right after. Oh, as output. Ah, never mind. I don't need to clone you. Oh, yeah, I do. So, now. Let outputs equals prog dot collect outputs. This is when you're glad you've introduced that feature. And um, now we can just assert eek prog comma outputs. And that's supposed to be our test. Collect outputs is supposed to collect all the outputs 
and return them. Maybe I need to have a Tuvac or an ampersand here somewhere, probably. Um, no, it returns the outputs as a vec. This is a vec. Vex and vex are vex. So let's test it. Oh, I was afraid of that. Binary operation cannot be a type applied to an int code. I didn't mean prog, I meant right. Okay, fine. Code. And this will be code.clone. And this will be code. And it failed as we expected. Test day 09 failed. Panic legal op code 9. Huh. Fascinating. Well, wow, that's super fascinating. Illegal opcode nine. Oh, right, I forgot to implement the instruction to set the rel base. Perfect. Okay. Sorry, I also forgot to switch back to the screen that we're coding on. So here's what I've done. I've went ahead and built the first test they did. It panicked, and when it panicked, it reminded me that, oh, I forgot to add opcode 9, which is that. So what do we have? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yep, this should be 9. I probably should just number those now because they matter. They technically will get those numbers anyway, but I'm getting to the point where I need the numbers. And what is the instruction to set the rel base called? It is called relative base offset. Oh. Opcode 9 is relative base offset. Huh. There's no very good acronym for that, so I'm just going to go with RBO, because what else am I supposed to use? Adjusts it. So it adds the RBO. Okay. This part's fairly straightforward. There's my instruction 9. There it is in my decoder. And down here in the thing, I just need to add in my int code interpreter a new thing for the thing. It's very much like this. Fetch the stuff. So this is all a bunch of machinery that I have for dealing with this stuff. There we are. And I don't think there's any bounds checking that can possibly be done on this because how could there be? Let's see if this still builds. It does. Let's try testing it again. Oh, it failed, but hopefully at least failed for a different interesting reason. Index out of bounds. The len is 100, but the index is 100. Okay. So we're not going to get a backtrace here, unless we do something really awkward. So we have an array indexing bug because we didn't check our index being off the end of the program. So. 
I guess our best bet is to go ahead and take our test, stick it in a file, Well, I guess I can just I see I have this all flat now so yeah I'm gonna have to do it that way So we're just going to kludge everything together for a minute so we can get a backtrace and figure out where we failed. Um, that should be all we need to do. I mean, I could go back and just grub for it, but it'll be easier to start with the backtrace. So I'm going to, can I have a lib and a bin in the same cargo file? Oh, that's an interesting question. I sort of don't remember. I kind of think you can. All right. Now we're talking rust backtrace equals one cargo run test of nine. Woohoo! Now, where is it dying? It's in decode fetch at line 123. No prob. Let's go look at decode fetch line 123. It's not too surprising. Oh. Oh. So I looked at that before. Imagine operand was one. Yep, there's a, I'm, on, I'm off by one. How nice for me. So let's go find all our resource resizes and add one. I think that's all of them, and that should get me where I want to go. And it dies again in store at line 155. Okay, does it die with the same error? Yep. Dang it, same dumb bug. How can that be? Oh. Right, I forgot to actually end prog here. Right. End prog needs to be mutable so that we know what happened. Right. We're in a lot of trouble here. So. We're gonna to have to inside the interpreter. Let n is n prog is self dot prog dot like no that should be all right. That's literally impossible. Huh. 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 
how can that possibly be true? Is it that the numbers overflowed? Maybe it tries to store a number bigger than 64 bits. Do I really need to make my program out of big nums? Because honestly, if I do, I think I quit advent of code. I think this might be the day I decide I don't have time for this this year. I mean, I could, it's not that hard, but it's just more irritation than I really feel like I have time for in my life. And in any case, in debug mode, things aren't supposed to overflow, so this should never happen. Hmm. 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 Really, really. Oh. We we have a bug somewhere. We're in collect output. We're in run at line two seventy seven, and we're starting the store. Let's go see what two seventy seven in hitcode.rs looks like. That's here. So we have a store in index mode. Hmm. So it really should. I'm not compiling in release mode, so it really should, if there's an overflow or something, have failed earlier. But the casting up there may be defeating me? I sort of feel like there must be a bug in the fetch. That my relative mode store is not working because of that. So let's go look at fetch. Hmm. Oh, yeah, this fetch and store implementation is bogus stuff. Let's stare at it again. No, this is the weird case where it went off the end of the instruction while trying to fetch the operand. That's boring. So we have this thing at the index position. Did I forget that resize? Maybe it falls off the end in the store because I forgot to resize it. I doubt it. Huh. So. What are we at? 945. 
Well, we have lots of options here. Okay. Oh, we don't ever save the rel base back when we're done. Um, shouldn't matter. Should be. Uh, there's a funny case here where we set the rel base in. Rel base relative mode where no, it should be fine, should absolutely be fine. We fetch the old one and then set the new one, huh? 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 Okay, I've got relative mode for fetch, and I believe it is the bottom line. Let's look at the relative mode for store. I sort of don't believe that can happen. I sort of don't believe that can happen. Should that be a greater than or equal? Yes, it should. And this is why you never take video of yourself programming, because when you see something dumb, you feel so stupid. Let's go look at every resize in the program. Yep. And they're all buggy because off by one because welcome to languages inherited from C where we count like a computer instead of like a human being. All right, let's try now. Hey, presto, our test passes. Isn't that interesting? Okay. So, welcome to the world of really bad debugging. Um, we will call that much good and implement the next test. Let's undo what we did here. Um, actually, let's finishing the testing in Prago in, what was it called? Test09, because it'll be easier to debug the rest of the tests, but this one looks really good. And when we're done, we'll just paste them back in and undo all this garbage. Okay. Should output a 16 digit number. I can believe that. 16 digits doesn't sound too scary. All right, so let's do this. So let's do that this, paste my new program, um, could just figure out what this is supposed to compute, but all I'm going to do is check that it outputs a 16 digit, num digit number, there's my program.
Is that supposed to output a 16 digit number? Hey, that works. All right. And let's do this one. Should output the large number in the middle. Okay, we can do that. Thank goodness it only needs 64 bit integers. God. All right. And really, we should add a loop here because this is dumb, but. So, um, let's get our program running again. Looks like the 16 digit number in the middle of code. Oh, right, but it might, yeah, in this case, I need to clone it so that I don't actually write over it. And that should work too. Hey, presto, our tests pass. We will now paste them back into Libe, into LibAOC for posterity int code.rs at the end Doop. here's all our coasts so let's get rid of test 09.rs let's look at cargo.toml let's get rid of this or at least for now comment it out Oh, let's just kill it. We can do it fast enough next time. Everything passes. Okay, we now think we have a valid relatively mode thing. So let's get our puzzle input. That's always the one of the adventures of the day. And we will go control A, control C, CD dot slash slash day oh nine. See how big this little thing is. Oh, it's big. Make sure it has a new line on the end. My stuff hates it when it doesn't have a new line on the end. I think it's actually going to be fine, but it makes me nervous. And now all we got to do is write the dumb little piece of code. Let's do that. Um, so we'll read the program from here. And then The boost key code. It was form us output any opcodes that seem to be functioning incorrectly. All right, I'm supposed to add an input of one.
There we go. So now we've got the program actually running with our input. And if um, Q is not equal to zero, Brooklyn Q and get out of here. And otherwise, panic bang did not produce boost code. Okay. Let's build. No, I always do that. I've done that like 10,000 times. See, when I was a boy, I used to program in Pascal, which had Rightland, and I've never gotten used to this being a macro. So let's do it again. Hey, cargo run one less than input dot text, and I get a boost code out. Let's see if it's the advent of code official boost code. Submit. Woohoo! We picked up our gold star. I now have a complete int code computer. Sure I do. Um, okay. Program runs in sensor boost mode by providing the input instruction, the value two in sensor boost mode. Runs in sensor boost mode by Okay. Oh, I see. It's going to run for a long time. And then it's going to output a single value, the coordinates of the distress signal. So I literally just have to do this. Okay. We are done with today. Well, at least it was mostly tedious nonsense. Um. It should only output one thing, right? Single value. Okay. Just to do this mess. That really is going to have to get rest formatted, so there we are. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and the only reason I'm copy pasting this whole mess is that I really want to respect what it tells me is going to happen and have an error message rather than something else. So I just am going to go there and make sure that it all is doing what it's supposed to. So make sure we add it in the two this time. See if it all works. Um, and it's gonna whine here. I see. I see. This is dumb. So let's see what part two gives us. I think that code's fine. Well, except for the missing curly bracket. I believe that is the whole story of this day. Let's try it and see what it does. Yeah, looks good. Oh, and we were given a clue here. Didn't take very long, so maybe it's buggy. I mean, that was really terrifyingly fast. Let's see what it looks like. 
Ho-ho! And there we are. We have completed um, Advent of Code Day 9. That worked quite a bit better than I hoped it would, but it still was an hour from start to finish, which is quite a long time to spend on these. Um, I still have about 10 minutes of work to do cleaning up after myself, so I'm going to go ahead and record that work in case you're interested. Uh, GitHub.com, Advent of Code, uh, Bart Massey, Advent of Code 2019, again, is the repo, if you want to see the results of this in real time. But here we go. Let's do the last little bit of cleanup. But before that, I can't resist taking a look at the various private leaderboards I'm part of because it's always fun. And let's see how we did in this one. Oh, I fell way behind. Some people were way faster than me. So I'm a little out of first, but not unbearably. This is the PSU leaderboard. And let's see what it looks like in the Rust People leaderboard. Hey, I picked up four places from number 20 to number 16. So that's kind of fun. Um, happy to be that. So that that's always, I don't care that much, but it is kind of interesting to watch. Uh, so here's what we do to clean this thing up. We go back to our calendar and back to the day. We view the page source of the problem, we copy it, and then we run our little script. Xclipb will actually take a cut uh, take stuff from the clipboard. Um, this is an alias to a X clipboard command, xclip command. Um, process aoc.sh. And now we have files called part one and part two. That's fantastic. And we haven't run cargo clippy yet. Clippy's happy. We haven't run cargo format yet. And you shouldn't really do that till you've checked it in, but I did. Let's see if it changed anything interesting. Nope, looks fine. So this is the boring part, pretty well done. I should be able to get add dot, get status. Um, that added the lock file, the toml file, the readme and the solution, which is correct. And so get, oh, but first, nah. I don't wanna do that yet. This always makes me nervous, but I know it works, so I'm going to do it. Yep. Okay. So let's do all those things here. Cargo. Clippy. Says fine. Cargo format. We'll do things. Get diff just to see what it looks like. Yeah, we did that. Sue me. That all looks reasonable. That all looks reasonable. This all looks perfectly reasonable. Yeah, I sort of like that rel based nonsense, but it'll work. And they claim this is the complete thing. And we have our new tests. Let's, speaking of which, let's one more time. Yes, there are zero fails, including doc tests. All right. So we just, oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong screen again. Someday I'll learn. Uh, so all we're going to do now is we're going to commit the AOC code we did, which we've run through Clippy and format. Let's do that. Uh, for rel base mode. There we go. And that gets that. Back to day 09, get add dot. Commit minus am, finish day nine. 
get push. And we are out of here. That is today's advent of code. Um, that stuff that's untracked there is part of another project. We don't need to worry about it. So that's advent of code in Rust. That's sort of, you got to watch all the bugs and all the debugging and all the stupid things that I did to try to make this all work. Uh, obviously I could have been faster and obviously I could have been a little cleaner, but overall it went, I think, pretty smoothly. I hope it was enjoyable. And with that, I will let you go. Have a nice whenever you're watching this and I hope to talk to you again soon. Mm.